three. Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us tonight here on the Simplicity of Christ channel, SOC. Tonight, I got a, I have a special guest. Uh, honored to have Brother Dylan Middleton on. How you doing today, brother? Doing fine. Uh, blessed to be here. Yeah, good to have you. Good to have you. I've seen, uh, met you on Facebook. Uh, you've been writing some awesome stuff, man. There are a lot of folks loving your material because uh i think uh, you're very you're very clear on salvation and other issues you're, you you everybody can understand what you're saying that's what we need in these days and times so how did you just just a question for you brother how how, how did you get the ability to, to to articulate your 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 messages i mean you're so clear what's your background um, in your preaching and teaching um no background actually um I have to give the glory to God on that one, um, as far as the ability to, to articulate thoughts and whatnot. Um, that's always a prayer I've had is uh, I always pray before the video. It's like, you know, Lord, Lord, help me to get this thought clearly to audience, uh, clearly communicate it. But um, yeah, as far as background of teaching or any kind of, you know, education, Bible college, don't have anything. Um actually never read the Bible until I was about 19 and I'm currently 21. So, okay. Yeah. Wow. Wow. So you came along very quickly. I wish I was that. I wish I was your age when I knew the truth like you did. I, I, it took me years. I'm, you know, much older than you now, but <laughs> excuse me, but it's, it's just, sure. It's refreshing. And I think it's refreshing for us as older folks, when you have a, your generation right now coming in, you can reach, you can, you're reaching a lot of people, man. I'm telling you, you're reaching a lot of people. Keep it up because there's a younger generation you can identify with you. Yeah. And the older generations, like, this is so refreshing, you know, that we have somebody this young that's got the truth, you know, knows the gospel inside and out, knows what uh, Lordship Salvation, I didn't know what Lordship Salvation was three years ago i had to learn it all off the internet you won't hear that those terms yeah. in the churches you will never hear those terms in churches right right it's right. usually it's it's taught a lot of places um but you'll, yeah you're right you'll probably never hear that word but the, the doctrinal beliefs that they hold to are taught are, are all over the place very popular oh absolutely what's what's one hand if we could we could tell somebody you know, if they're sitting in their church, what what would you say, uh, Brother Dylan, be one thing to listen out for if they're sitting either under a Calvinistic or a Lordship Salvation message? If they're sitting there, what what can we tell them? What would, what would you think be a, a good indicator if they're sitting under such teaching? Yeah. Um, one thing is, is always uh, pointed out consistent to me is vagueness. Um, you know, they a lot of the times they'll pitch forth these ideas, but they never kind of elaborate on it. But they'll say, you know, things like, well, if you're truly saved, you'll have a changed life. But then they never elaborate on how much change is necessary. You know, am I changed enough? Am I close enough to this truly saved finish line or not? You know, and then they'll say things like, um, you know, well, you know, works don't save, but if you're truly saved, you'll have works. All right. Okay? Right. So that's kind of right. like a, that's kind of like an oxymoron in a way. Cause you, you know, you're telling me that I don't have to have works to be saved, but yet if I don't have works, then I might need to question my salvation. And it's, it's all, it's all very vague and it's, it's, they can't ever really define these stipulations. So that would okay. be, that would be one thing I would certainly tell people to look out for is, is uh, the message of the reformers or capitalists or, you know, lordship, salvation, whatever you want to call it. Um, a lot of that ministry is based on doubt. Um, you know, very rarely will you ever hear people preaching to the lost how to be saved. It's usually telling God's people, well, you know, you might just not really be saved. It's, it's usually just a lot of fear and a lot of doubt given to them. Gotcha. That would be that would probably be the easiest for somebody, especially if somebody doesn't know a lot of scripture. That would be what I would tell somebody to look out for. I, I would have to say. Gotcha. Gotcha. Yeah, I, I, I agree with what, exactly what you said, too. Also, 
when when I when you sit there and listen to the the preacher, the pastor, for you, for whatever you're under sitting under, a uh, Bible school teacher, I go also by, is this message make me feel heavy? You know, sometimes mm-hmm. you know you can feel, a, you can sense something, something's not right. Discernment, mm-hmm. you can just you know, as soon as you have that discernment, you need to start digging. Oh yeah, asking your, <clears throat> asking your yourself some questions. Why do I feel this way? Something's not right. There's a check in my spirit about something. Yeah, you know, I believe you know that we have with the Holy Spirit inside of you. If you truly, I'll say this: trusted Christ as your Savior alone. You know, right. you have the Holy Spirit, you yeah, the Holy Ghost. You know, so, um, but yeah, that's some great, some some great pointers there. Um, so so tonight it looks like our conversation, brother, it looks like it's going to we're going to lead us into, um, how to tell if you're sitting under. A lordship salvation and we're going to go to scripture and we're going to we're going to try to draw from scripture folks um i think you know to pick out a topical a topic and throw scripture at it i think that's a wrong approach um mm. I, we're going to draw from the scripture we're going to right. show you we're going to write dylan we're going to show you that from scripture that it is by faith through grace that's it simple amen, yeah amen um so let's start out with you know, I, I really enjoyed Ephesians two, but if there's a scripture that comes to mind. You chime in there, uh, yeah. and we'll we'll throw it up on the screen. And I'm gonna I'm gonna switch screens here. I'm gonna put up Eastward, and we'll go to Ephesians chapter two uh, for starters and see what see how it breaks breaks out right, here. Okay. Mm-hmm. One moment. I gotta find my share screen button. Then I, okay. Okay. Can you see that on your end, Dylan? Uh, let's see here. Yes. Okay. All right. I'm going to try to get you here with me. Here you are. Got to shrink these boxes down so we can see the scripture. But when I put these, at one point, I had put this to memory. And I'm not too great at memorizing. Um whole passages but i was challenged by someone to not only memorize out of your flesh pray through these scriptures pray through them and i was able to memorize the first (laughs) first verse all the way down through 10 but it did something once i got that word on the inside these passages here really it really quenched the thirst that i had it's really uh it really is really helpful so let's see what we got here um if you would you like to would you like to read the passages one through sure. ten? Of course, sure. go ahead. All right, starting at verse one, and you hath he quickened who were dead in trespasses and sins, wherein time past ye walked according to the course of this world, <clears throat> according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience among whom also we had, we all had our conversation in times past in the lusts of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature the children of wrath, even as others. But God, who is rich in mercy for his great love wherewith he loved us, even when we were dead in sins, hath quickened us together with Christ. By grace ye are saved and hath raised us up together, and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus, that in the ages to come he might shew the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness toward us through Christ Jesus. For by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. For we are his workmanship, Created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. Amen. Amen and amen. That's, amen. that's great. Amen. Yes. I, I tell you what, those, what do you see? Well, after you read those passages, brother, what what came to your mind? Um, well, there's a couple of things that come to my mind. Um, uh, to begin, in verse 1, um, and if you even wanted to uh, 
one could go back to chapter one and see yes. here that Let's he's that. speaking to um to the saints which are at Ephesus, which um you know indicates he's speaking to born again individuals. And so one thing that's interesting is this could be very newly saved people. You know? Uh we don't know for sure. Oh, yeah. Um but so so uh if you want to jump back to chapter two, okay. Uh, chapter one just tells us that he's speaking to the saints. He's speaking to those who have been born again, which he describes in verses eight and nine, uh, by grace through faith, uh, not of yourselves, not of works. So those these people have placed their faith in the gospel and they've been saved, not of themselves, not of works. And now he's speaking to these people. He says, and you hath he quickened. Uh, who were dead. So there's a past tense, who were dead uh, in trespasses and sins. That's a and, great you know, point. We read in several different places, we receive that we are quickened by the Spirit. And so one thing that jumped out um, to my mind, or jumped out to me, is that he's kind of drawing this distinction here. Um, you've got verses, let's see, one, two, and three, he's kind of drawing you back. He's saying, you know, you were no different than um, the children of disobedience. You were them. You were lost. You were un you were um, you were not born again. And if you look in the Greek, I can't recall the word at this moment, but that disobedience, the children of disobedience, that's uh, unbelief. <coughs> um, I believe I agree. I believe it's Strong's five forty three is the is the number for that one. But um, so he's, he's drawing this distinction. He's saying, and you, he is quickened who you were dead in sins, but God who is rich in mercy uh, for his great love, wherewith he loved us and quickened us together with Christ. And then he tells us, um, raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. So there's that positional truth in Christ. Uh, in the spirit, however you want to say it, as it's, you know, it's said different ways uh, throughout the New Testament. Mm -hmm. And, and um, so, um, let's see, the verses eight and nine, we've covered those. Mm -hmm. And um, verse 10 is what always points out to me in this. Oh, yeah. And, and if you ever need to chime in, uh, don't let me don't let me yeah. take the take the whole time. But uh, here you're fine. Um, yeah, yeah. Go ahead. Ver verse ten. I'll speak on that for just a moment. Sure. That that verse, especially, um, you know, the lordship salvation or reformed doctrine or Calvinistic doctrine. We've talked about that. This verse is one of many that they like to uh, hijack. So I'll read it again. For we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. So that right there, when it says should, that indeed does mean what it says, that you you and I have been saved. Uh, we, should. we should do those things. We should do those things. Now, the unfortunate thing is that the, uh, the reformers or the Calvinistic or Lordship Salvation would have you think that everyone who gets saved will walking them right and they, they unfortunately Correct. they unfortunately skip over that um where it states that we should walk in them that, that's and, great um so there's that's a that's not very biblically sound and there's multiple ways that that you can <clears throat> show that you know not you're not just going to do those things because you're saved right but they often will do this sort of thing where it's like it's a hallmark evidence. You know, if you're truly saved, you'll have you'll have the words. Right? Correct. Um, works are a great thing. We're just we're told here that we should we should have them. We should. However, however, that's not something that someone needs to look at to determine if their conversion is valid. And the reason for that is um, in Matthew chapter seven want to if you want to go to there you can or yeah. i can just read let's, it but um yeah let's, uh yeah let's just go there real quick one okay minute, one moment and we're going down to i'm going to assume we're going down to 20 yeah yeah where are you headed 20 20 21 through 23 there you go 
Right. So um, not everyone, uh, or let, let's, let me think of how to word this. Um, works are not an indication of whether or not you've been truly saved or not. And the reason we know that is lost individuals can have works and can have plenty of them. Um, oh, absolutely. You're atheists. You're atheists out there do wonderful works. Right. They're, right. they're loving people. Some of them, a lot of them are loving people, caring people. Right. That, absolutely. Now, they do good works. Am I going to automatically think, oh, they're in Christ? No. No. <laughs> no. And so um, a, a lot of the time, and I agree with you, a lot of the times the, the Lordship Doctrine will have you think that if you don't have these works, then you're not saved. Well, that's that's just not a true statement because we read here, Christ says, in, beginning in verse 21, he says, not everyone that say, saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father, which is in heaven. Many, meaning a lot, will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name, and in thy name have cast out devils, and in thy name done many wonderful works. And then will I profess unto them, I never knew you, depart from me, ye that work iniquity. So these individuals here, they had the works, um, but they, they had never done... done they had never done the will of the Father, which you can find in John 6, um, which is simply to believe on the Son. These individuals were never saved. Right. He says, I never knew you. So never, never knew you. Here's what I see in these passages here. Here's what's, this is, for me, Brother Dylan, this is probably one of the most, I don't want to use the word scariest, <laughs> scary. These verses are very scary to me. Because it, it says this, what I see here says, not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter in the king, kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father, which is in him. Many, many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name, and in thy name have cast out devils, and in mm -hmm. thy name, thy name, yeah, yeah, done many for one. So you're here, you see a person that's not saved. Mm -hmm. Use this is how powerful the name of Christ is, the mm -hmm. name of Jesus. A lost person can use the use the name of Jesus, peddle his name, and have many wonderful works. Oh yeah, and he's and that, I mean, it's it, that right there is like wow. Jesus' name. It doesn't matter who you are if you're using his name. It's going to get stuff done. It's going to get work yeah. done. You know, whether you know that's why you know God can use anyone to advance mm -hmm. His kingdom. Oh but, yeah, but this here, um, then then Jesus, like you said, and then I will profess unto them, I never knew you, never like you said, he never knew them from the beginning, right? No relationship. Yeah, and and so the reason that this such is is uh, such an important uh, group and verses, especially in compared with Ephesians two ten, if you want to back there, if you want to um, bounce back there. Is that Ephesians two ten? It it says what it means. Um, you're saved by grace through faith, not of yourselves, not of works, um, and that we are created in Christ Jesus unto good works. That we should walk in them. We should. It's not a matter that we will. It's not a matter that you know if you don't have those works, you need to exactly. make sure that you're saved because we know lost individuals can have works. So that's exactly. not like a. I just want to. I hope that that's clear. On the, the no, thought that we're trying to get across here. That, that's very clear because that verse 10, if you look at it, you know, we should walk in them. It doesn't say, like you said, we, it doesn't say we must walk in them. It doesn't say we will, because if it was a must, will, or shall in there instead of should, mm -hmm. it would be contradicting verses 8 and 9. It, you're exactly right. Paul is very careful here, guys. Paul, Paul says here, for by grace are ye saved through faith. Faith is a conduit through faith. And yeah. that not of yourselves. It is a gift of God. It's a free gift. Yeah. Not of works, lest any man should boast. And what's the gift here? Is the gift faith or is the gift salvation? The gift is salvation. Amen. Right? It's not the gift is not faith. Okay. Right. <laughs> um yeah, that's good stuff. What else you got for that, brother? Um I just uh one thing that um points out to me um 
is that so Paul Paul's drawing this distinction here, and I think that you can see this all over the New Testament, and we can we in some of the other uh, verses that we might look at later, you might mm -hmm. be able to see it. But um, Paul draws this distinction here, talking about we have been quickened spiritually, we have now been born again by right. that new spirit nature, and right. so yeah, uh, and you who he hath quickened who were dead in trespasses and sins. So uh what I what I feel like what I can see Paul doing is is he's telling us that this is who we were. We were solely of the flesh. We were lost and now we have been saved. And he hath raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. So it's like what it's like what I see Paul telling us here is he's like, you were lost. You just had the flesh. But now you've been saved. You have that born again spirit. And you're positionally in Christ. That spirit is perfectly in Christ. You're, I mean, you're going to heaven. But okay. now begins that um, that growth that you can have. That that uh, the should have works. So it's like he's telling us that there's still a part of us that it's not to go to heaven or anything like that. This is a person who's been saved. It's just that that grow that uh, some people use the term. Uh, practical sanctification, I believe. Right. Yeah. Um, he's kind of getting us ready. He's saying, you know, now now that you're saved, maybe we should start growing. Maybe we should start learning, start doing some exactly. things. Exactly. You made you made a good point about quickened. When I when I read that those verses, what came to my mind, Brother Dylan, was this proves that once you've been quickened, you went from darkness to light. Mm -hmm. In an instant, it's a one time justification, oh, yeah. is a one time singular event. Oh, yeah, that's what I see. It's one time, it's a one time singular event. We have been reborn, yeah. I mean, I agree. yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it indeed yeah. is a, a one time. Um, and you can find that even in the first chapter of Ephesians if you if you want. Um, let's go there. Um, as far as it being one time event, if you go down to verse 13. That's exactly where I was wanting to go to. Good job. Yeah, that's, <laughs> I like that verse there. Yeah. There's a, yeah, I love this verse. I, I use it a lot. Um, mm -hmm. One thing I really like about this verse, uh, and even if you look in the Greek, it's it's consistent. It's using past tense words here. And yes. then we also trusted, trusted past tense, mm -hmm. heard tra past tense, and whom also after that ye believed past tense. Ye were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise. Just as you said, it's that one time event that if that that lost soul hears the gospel, it says it right here, the gospel of your salvation and places that places their faith in that to save them in that moment. In and that moment. also trusted after that ye believed that moment ye were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise, which is the earnest of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession. Amen. Amen. I like what I see here. Um, I see an order of operation. You know, um, this this right here totally refutes Calvinism. Just these two verses. Oh, yeah. Oh, the order of operation is this. It's, you know, whom he trusted after, after yeah. that you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom... Also, after that, you believe mm -hmm. you were sealed. So we have to hear the gospel. We trust the gospel. We trust Christ, death, burial, and the resurrection of Christ alone. Yep. We are sealed. It's that same until, thing. Yes. Until when? The redemption of our purchased possession unto the praise of his glory. So what do you think that, that means? When someone asks you, what does that mean? What what does it mean the redemption of the purchase possession? What would you tell um, them? Let's see here. One verse that has always stuck out to me, um, as far as the um what that is. Uh if you read in First Corinthians um six, nineteen and twenty. Let's go there. So okay. The purchase possession. 
you know, we just read that upon salvation, upon that moment of belief, we are sealed. Okay, so here we see another consistency with, with Scripture. It says, What? Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, which ye have of God, and ye are not your own? For ye are bought with a price. Ephesians tells us we're a purchased possession. For ye are bought with a price. Therefore glorify God in your body and your spirit, which are God's. Um, and that, that redemption of the purchased possession is you and me. Um, and that redemption... Um, would be either the day our death whenever that would be or the rapture amen Absolutely. i'll say an amen on that that's good that's good stuff and, and and that means so let's go back to ephesians great scripture reference by the way to that um back verse one <clears throat> so um so yeah so right here um, that means we, we, that, that's our eternal security. Oh yeah. There's no, there's no wiggle room here for this first proves our eternal security. That's our eternal, that's our assurance. Right. I mean, that they're... means we are sealed with the Holy spirit. Yeah. I mean, it Scripture would have to... does not say you're unsealed. You can be unsealed nowhere. No. There should be, I would think, if you could lose your salvation, it should be very plain in its <laughs> own chapter. Oh, yeah. Here's what you need to do to keep it. Here's what you need to do to lose it. Don't yeah. do that or you'll lose it. It should be very plain, as it is very plain that we're saved by grace through faith here. Oh, yeah. Right? This is our eternal assurance. Right. Uh, and that, 100%. That, oh, yeah, I agree. I mean, it's... It, plainly says which is the earnest of our inheritance until what i sin too much i miss church quit having works no until the redemption of the purchased possession and i i like what you said there about um the clarity of what of what god's word says about eternal security and about faith alone and christ alone um I've, you'll see a lot of people who will try to teach these other things that you can lose your salvation right or that you have to have or that you have to have works um, to either be saved or to maintain salvation. And they'll often go to the parables of Christ because, you know, he spoke with the in an allegory, you know, with hidden meaning. Um, but you, what you have to do in those moments is you have to say, OK, these men were divinely inspired. There's not going to be an error here. So if 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 uh, Paul is saying something here. And then, you know, we got some, you know, Mark's writing this, a, a parable. They're not going to disagree. Some people that believe in that, um, that hyper, um, I never can say that word, where they believe you were saved by keeping the law or whatever in oh, different yeah. instances, um, they'll probably disagree. Oh, hyper, hyper dispensationalism or something yeah. like that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> now that person, yeah. that person will probably agree. But, but the word, if, if you, if it looks like people are having a disagreement, you've got to say, Okay, what are they talking about here? Right. They're not going to contradict each other. And um I think that's a perfect us saying that and getting established in what Paul's telling us here about that we've been saved by grace through faith and that we should have works and then dividing the word. I think that I think that's a perfect time to go to James too. Okay. Um we could do that. We got a I got a ten minute warning prompt here. Okay. Um, we'll give a, we'll get a few more minutes, then we'll end the first video, folks, and we'll go on. You think you ready for a session two, brother? Dylan? Hey, I'm ready. I told you. you. Time flies when you're having fun, right? Yeah, so, that's the um, truth. Uh, so a little, <laughs> excuse me, guys. Um, but yeah, that that that's some good stuff there that you brought. Uh, within Ephesians, I'm glad we did go to Ephesians one. That's a good move there because we have to we have to consider the context. Ask those questions. Who are they referring to? Who is Paul writing to? Right. Um, that was uh, that was good stuff. Uh, back to verse two. Um, let's see here. Th this these passages are so thirst quenching. If I could mm -hmm. find a, a lack of better term, because if you think about uh, the, the miracle that happened when you went from darkness to light, especially you know if someone is under this 
this heaviness of lordship salvation. Oh yeah. They don't know who they are in Christ. They don't know whose they are. They don't they don't have no identity. You know, because the Lordship's works salvation is, you know, preaching style of preaching, it focuses on self. Yeah. Not the Christ. It focuses on you. And we're flawed. There's oh, no yeah. hope. There's no peace in our flesh. Peace is knowing the scriptures, as you said, the scriptures yeah. and knowing who you are in Christ. So verse six, he says here, um, and hath raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places. We are seated. We are so saved, brother. We are <laughs> seated in heavenly places already. That's good news. Amen. Yeah, it is. So that is a gratitude builder. And out of the, out of that gratitude, this is what this is what grace does, folks. Grace, you know, gratitude is is a fruit of grace. I that's what I see, because that will enable us to do ten verse ten. Now, yeah. some people say, well, verse ten doesn't mean actual works. It's more of a spiritual working in Christ in the future. I could see maybe, but the plain reading of the text. Is what we're talking about. Yeah. For we are his workmanship. I mean, we are his masterpieces. Yeah. Created. We are a new creature. We are created in Christ Jesus unto good works. Doesn't say, well, this it says good unto good works, which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. Yeah. So um what you brought there was great. Um, so we have six minutes left. Let's just do this. Let's go ahead and uh, end end this session before we go to James. Do you want to go to James the next session? Yeah. Then we'll yeah. have to, so we won't have a break there uh, at in the middle of James. So we'll just start James or on a session two, folks. Uh, I'm going to stop this share for now. Thank you. Uh, this is be the first video of I don't know how many. Just we'll go we'll go until Dylan says stop. All so, right. <laughs> He's got a baby at home. So um, yeah. so we're going to end this short video, for guys. Thank you again for joining us here, Brother Dylan and 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 myself on the SOC channel. I hope you find this a blessing, and we'll return soon. Bye for now.